Welcome back to the Wizard Yacht. I just purchased a 400 foot yacht and we are cruising on the ocean. Let's get started. Just kidding guys. We have not purchased a 400 foot yacht. We are on a cruise ship. Actually, we just went on an Alaskan cruise for Mrs. Wizard. You guys saw in the previous video, she's kind of retired now. She works at the shop. And we celebrated by going on a cruise. We're currently in the Pacific near Seattle, heading back actually towards Seattle. It's a beautiful, beautiful Pacific Ocean behind me. Actually, here's a few shots of some of the trip we just finished up, and I'll let you guys take a look. So all fun aside guys, we're going to do a video here of five things you should never tell your mechanic. Either before or during a service, it could severely backfire on you. I've been through this many, many times running a shop where someone thinks they're being helpful or they think that the outcome could be improved, when in reality, you'll probably end up pissing your mechanic off and it can actually backfire on you. So, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing you should never tell your mechanic is before there's a diagnosis or before an estimate has been written up, is to tell the mechanic, just fix it all, just do it all. Call me when it's done. Now, if you trust your mechanic and you've done business with them for years or months, at least months, you could probably get away with doing this and they're going to give you a fair estimate. But if you don't know the mechanic, this is a bad, bad idea. Because they will call you when the vehicle is done. It could be nine grand. You don't know what they did. And legally, there is nothing you can do because you just told them, do it all. So be very, very careful about what you tell them to do. Always say, let's find out what's wrong. Give me a call. We'll go over the numbers. And then I will tell you an approval or disapproval of what I'd like done. In many videos, I say that customers choose to do this or to do that. It is their decision on what they want done to their car. It is their car. So, or your car, you guys' car. So be very careful about just giving a blank check to your mechanic, especially if you're new to that shop. The second thing you definitely should never tell your mechanic is a predetermined diagnosis when a diagnosis hasn't even been carried out yet. No one even knows what's wrong with your car yet, but you say, I read online or I researched on Google that this is what's wrong with my car. So I only want the mechanic to fix this and nothing else. This can get you to big trouble because the mechanic will only fix that item and if it truly fixes the problem or not, it's no longer the mechanic's problem. It's your problem. Because that's exactly what you told them to do, was only that. The correct thing to say is, I've read that this could be wrong, but let's do a diagnosis and figure out if that's the case or not. And then get back with me and we'll talk about what we're going to go from there. But never say, I read that this is wrong. Only fix that. How often do you read online when you have medical symptoms that it, you say, I have a sore throat, I have this going on, and it says, oh, you've got cancer oh, well, I guess I better look into cancer treatment. It may not even be cancer. It may be just that you just have a sore throat. So be careful with what you read online. Let the mechanic do the diagnosis. Then you can kind of compare with the findings based on what you read. The third thing we're going to talk about to never tell your mechanic is basically the steps involved to do the job. In many cases, a mechanic who's experienced 20, 30 years of experience knows that time can be saved if you take this or that loose and you can quickly get this or that part out and replace it without a major teardown. But you get on the phone with the mechanic and say, I've read that you have to take the radiator out, you have to do this, you have to do that, and I want you to do this and that and do it in that order. That's what I want to see on my ticket that you did those steps. The mechanic's not going to argue with you. They're going to say, well, in their mind, they're going to say, I could do it a lot faster, but since you want to tell me how to do my job, I will happily charge you to take all these parts off 
and add it to the bill. And you will think, oh, I got exactly what I asked for, even though it was kind of more expensive than I had anticipated. They did all the steps that I told them they should do, when in fact, they could have saved you some money if you just let them do their job. They can also go the other way. Between one year of a vehicle and another year of a vehicle, things can have changed where maybe in one year you have to pull the dash to get to an HVAC actuator. In a year newer vehicle, you don't. You tell the mechanic, well, I know on these cars the dash has to come out. When in truth, it may not. Or vice versa, you could say, I know the dash doesn't have to come out. But in this year model, it does. It can create contention. It can create arguing where there doesn't need to be. The fourth thing to never tell your mechanic or actually do is watch the mechanic do the whole job. I've actually had people say, can I come into the shop? I want to watch you do the job. Number one, this says right off the bat, right off the first step is, I don't trust you. I want to watch you do the work. When in fact, the mechanic probably has done the job many times, whatever job that is, you're saying, I think this is your first time and you don't know what you're doing. Secondly, whatever you do for a living, whatever it is that you do to earn a paycheck, do you want someone staring and watching you every step of the way? The mechanic doesn't want that either. It can get people on edge, there can be mistakes made where normally there would not be mistakes made because the mechanic is stressed out, having a pair of eyes watching them through the whole thing. And thirdly, in this fourth item, during a loved one having a very extensive surgery in the operating room, there are things that the surgeon is going to do which is normal practice. But as a person who's not a surgeon just observing would see these things and go, oh my God, I can't believe you just did that. When in fact there was nothing abnormal that was actually done. It just the observer doesn't know what's normal and what's not. So it really doesn't benefit the mechanic or you to watch them do the whole job. There is no benefit to have this done. The solution is find a mechanic that you trust drop off the vehicle, and let them do their job. The last thing I want to talk about, it can be very, very upsetting to a mechanic, is when you've already agreed upon a price, you've agreed upon the methods, or everything that you want done with your vehicle, and you show up for the day of service and inform the mechanic, oh, by the way, I've already pre-purchased all the parts for this job. They're in the trunk. Uh, that way it'll keep it, my bill a little bit lighter. And uh, I'll go ahead and have at it. The parts are in the trunk. In theory, it sounds like a good idea. I get that. But it is not. Because I can get the parts, or actually most mechanics can get the parts for far below what you even paid for them. And even with shop markup, it won't be any cheaper or expensive. It'll be about the same, really. And you get a warranty. And speaking of warranty, I have certain suppliers that I work with that I know they have a good warranty, that they'll stand behind their parts, Therefore, I can stand behind my work and the parts and feel comfortable with the warranty. There's been many times where a customer shows up with a box of parts from Amazon or even a box of parts that I don't even know where the hell they got the parts. Are they good parts? Are they bad parts? Who's going to stand behind the warranty on wherever they bought them? I don't even know. So how can I offer a warranty, or how can I even have interest to even install those parts and offer you a warranty when it's just a big question mark for me in my shop to know, is this going to make you happy? Six months from now, are you going to have a positive experience out of the parts that you bought from who knows, God knows where? I've actually had customers show up with used parts. Obviously, I'm not going to offer any kind of warranty putting used parts on and it only lasts two months and you, I get a phone call, hey, that part you put on broke. Yeah, because you brought me some crap used part from a salvage yard. No joke. But there are times when this can work out, like with the Alfa Romeo Milano or the Citroen I have in the shop, which the customer Bill owns the Alfa Romeo. The parts can be extremely hard to find. 
if you as the customer already have the parts, it's worth the gamble because there really isn't any other options. And I know this up front. Hey, Dave, I'm going to be purchasing these parts. I know you, you don't want to spend a lot of time finding them. I've already found them. I'll include them in the trunk. And both parties know, hey, this is what's happening. And it's totally agreed upon and it's totally cool. Now, I will warranty my workmanship on the job if you supply the parts. But keep in mind, if that part fails from factory defect, not from my workmanship defect, but from a factory defect, you will pay the shop or me or whoever's doing the job a second time to take it all back apart. And the labor and the warranty claim on the failed part is on you. Because when you call to claim warranty, they're not going to want to talk to the mechanic. They want to talk to the person who bought the parts, which is you. You bought them. I've been through this many times with customers, and towards the end, when we get everything resolved, the same statement is made every time. I should have just let you get all the parts because this totally was not worth it on my end. It saves time and it makes people happier. It's not about profits. It's not about money. It's about a smooth transition, a smooth job. So thanks for following along, guys, We're on our cruise here from Alaska. We're not in Alaska right now, but we went on an Alaskan cruise. It was very enjoyable. We had a great time. And kind of when we were cruising along, I thought we could do a video for you guys talking about things you should never tell the mechanic or things you should never do that could really interrupt a smooth process of getting your car fixed. As soon as the credits are done, don't click off and go somewhere else. Stay a little while because we're going to have some beautiful ocean scenery. If you just need to relax for a minute, you need to blow off some steam, you want a nice warm ocean breeze and hear the waves, I'll give you guys that. Spend a few minutes enjoying and uh, make sure to check out our Amazon affiliates. Link in the description below if you want to see what kind of tools we use in the shop. Everything's listed for sale there. You could purchase tools for your use and make sure to hit the subscribe button because we got many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.